Welcome to Lesson 7 about the honeybee. The honeybee used by beekeepers is the Western or European honeybee, Apis mellifera, which means honey-bearing bee. This bee is native to Europe, Asia, and Africa, and in the early 1600s they were introduced to North America. There are currently 28 subspecies, and all are cross-fertile, which has resulted in a significant crossbreeding when subspecies are located near one another. Honeybees live in colonies, and because of their inability to survive individually, are a unique organism, identified as a superorganism. Each bee has a role in the success of the colony and work together to encourage that success. The three types of honeybees living in a colony are the queen, and each hive has one mated queen, and the healthy and more vigorous the queen, the more successful the hive. Worker bees, they account for between 5,000 to 50,000 non-fertile females, and they do all of the work in the hive. And the drone, the male bee, which usually in numbers between 200 and 2,000 during the period of active foraging. The queen is much longer in length and is very streamlined looking when you compare her to the honeybees that are surrounding her, the worker bees. Her cell shape when she hatches is much larger than a normal cell and it hangs down either from the bottom of the frame or the side of the frame usually. Most people describe it as looking sort of like a peanut. And as you can see from the pictures here, how a person can get that, that image in their mind. The picture in the middle of the screen is a queen cell that is indicative of a swarm cell, meaning that that queen is being raised because the original queen in the hive is ready to take half of the workers and leave the hive and create a new colony. The one on the far right, being more in the middle of the frame, is indicative of what's called a supersedure cell. And that's when the worker bees feel that the queen bee in that hive isn't doing her job. She's either not healthy or not vigorous, and they've decided to produce a new queen. So remember, there's two reasons for queen cells. The hive decides the queen is not healthy and replaces her, such as the supersedure cell, or the hive decides it's strong enough to split and create a new hive. In that case, there is a swarm cell. The queen doesn't do anything for herself once she is in the hive. She's fed, groomed, and directed where to lay her eggs and what kind of eggs to lay by the workers. The life cycle of the queen is the longest of any of the bees in the hive. She can live three to five years. She takes 16 days from the point the egg is laid to emergence from her cell. She's fed a special diet of, called royal jelly throughout her development, while other bees are only fed royal jelly for the first three days. Royal jelly contains the protein royal lactin, which allows for the full development of the sexual organs in the queen. The queen, once she hatches, usually stays in the hive, except for one to three mating flights soon after she hatches, and, of course, if she leaves the hive with a swarm. The queen's only function is to lay eggs. She lays between 1,500 to 2,500 eggs per day during the spring buildup, and that's in preparation for the honey flow. She actually can lay more eggs in a day than her body weight. As you can see by the picture, the eggs are very, very small. They are uh, long, oblong, resting upright in the bottom of a cell. The queen slows down on her egg laying in the fall and may actually not lay at all in the winter. Worker bees are the vast majority of the bees that are in a hive and they are females, non-fertile, and a healthy hive build up for the honey flow can have between 50,000 and 80,000 worker bees. The life cycle for a worker bee is, it takes 21 days from, an, from the 
egg being laid to emergence from the cell. In late fall and winter, they can live four to nine months. But during the heavy honey flow, when they're doing most of their foraging, they only live an approximate four to six weeks, actually working themselves to death. The worker bees have specific tasks as they age. The first task they have is that of taking care of the eggs, the larva, and the pupa, and they're called a nurse bee. Next stage is construction bee. They're responsible for building more cells and pulling out foundation. Then comes hive maintenance, where they're responsible for cleaning and for moving stores. Guard bee is responsible for protecting the hive from intruders and predators. And lastly, they become a foraging bee, gathering nectar and pollen. For a worker bee, when they forage, they only go after or go to one plant and after one product. So if they're headed out to gather pollen, that is all that they do on that trip, and they only gather pollen from one particular source. The picture that you see here are worker bees gathering pollen from a pussy willow tree. Please notice the large yellow bags or balls of pollen on their rear legs. Those are called pollen sacks. They also gather nectar and use it for immediate food as well as stores. The bees that you see out flying and are on flowers that do not have pollen in their bags are gathering nectar. Workers gather enough nectar to produce honey to feed the hive throughout the whole year. The nectar that's gathered from the flowers is regurgitated and evaporated by the workers in the hive. They reduce the water content to approximately 20% so that the resultant honey can be sealed without spoiling. Workers must store at least 60 pounds of honey at a minimum to survive over winter. They'll will visit approximately 2 million flowers in order to produce one pound of honey. One worker gathers the equivalent of about 1 12th teaspoon of honey in her lifetime. And workers will fly an estimated 50,000 miles to collect one pound of honey. All of these numbers vary and are averages. They obviously depend on proximity to nectar sources, the concentration of sugar in the nectar source, weather, and a variety of other situations, but they're a nice rule of thumb to keep in mind. Drones are the only male bees in the hive, and the only purpose that they have is to mate with a queen bee. They provide no other service to the hive or to the colony and are fed and cared for totally by the worker bees. The life cycle is the longest except for the queen takes 24 days from the point of an egg being laid to emergence from a cell. So they take longer to develop than either a queen or a worker bee. As you can see in the picture, the cell is larger and has a domed cap. They're longer and wider than worker bees, but not as long as a queen. They have noticeably larger eyes, and that's probably the first thing that you recognize about them when you see them is the glossy black eyes on their head. They do not have a stinger. Their life expectancy is only about 90 days. They hatch out, getting ready for mating, and then when summer ends and fall begins, they are actually kicked out of the hive by the worker bees so that they are not have to uh, be fed and cared for over winter. Every day between approximately 11 a.m. and 3 p.m., drones leave their hive and fly to a predetermined drone congregation area. Virgin queens fly to the same area with the purpose of mating. Queens will mate with about 5 to 12 drones, and the act of mating actually paralyzes the drone, which dies soon after depositing his sperm. Mating takes only two to four seconds and occurs in flight. Since there are many more drones than queens, most drones never have the opportunity to mate. In summary, the colony of bees is a superorganism. They work together to accomplish what the hive needs to have, and they support one another in all their actions and activities. There are three different kinds of bees in a hive. One is the queen. There's only one per colony, 
She is cared for by workers throughout her life, and her only job is to lay eggs. You must have a vigorous and healthy queen to have a successful hive. Worker bees are the vast majority of the bees in a hive. They're all non-fertile females, and they do all the work of the hive. They're responsible from everything from taking care of the nursery to gathering in honey and nectar and pollen, and they also are responsible for directing the activities of the queen. Drones are the only males in the hive, and their only purpose is to find a queen and mate with a queen. They are kicked out of the hive in late summer and fall so that they do not have to be fed because they do not forage for themselves.